Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the May 15th, 2024 Worcester Township Board of Supervisors work session. Would you please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? It's okay with everybody, I will dispense with the introductions. I think everybody knows who's who, if you will. Um, first and foremost, does anybody have any informational items for the board this evening? Mr. Chairman, uh, just uh, for the record, this meeting is being video recorded for broadcast. That would be all. Thank you. First item on our agenda is public comment. We do ask that you limit your public comment to five minutes. Does anybody have any public comment for the board this evening? Seeing none, we'll move forward. So for the work session, we have, a, it looks like two items. We'll start with the fee schedule amendment discussion. I think Christian, this is you or is it Jay or is it both of you? Wait. All right. All right, board members, uh, members of the public, thank you for uh, coming this evening, of course. Um, so uh, one of the first things that I started to do when uh, I was hired here uh, and getting my feet wet was review the subdivision and development application fees, the zoning hearing board application fees, the conditional use fees, um, and uh, similar to what I've done in the past, uh, in my experience, uh, I performed an analysis to determine what the average cost for each fee actually is, uh, and also uh, what the existing fees that we have are compared to our peers, and what proposed fees would be compared to our peers. Um, I was able to determine hourly rate of employees and included base pay and benefits uh, as part of the analysis and interviewed staff uh, concerning the average amount of time they spend for each task associated with each uh, type of application uh, and then calculated the average cost of the township per each fee item. Um, as was in the board's packet, there was a memo uh, as well as the fee schedule with some red marks but there are a number of fees that are uh, we're looking at potentially increasing based upon costs to the township, uh, just covering the costs. Uh, and uh, some of them are zoning hearing board application uh, fees. Um, for existing residential, it would only be going up around $25, uh, but uh, we would be introducing uh, non-residential uh, or all other applications, which is very typical in other municipalities because non-residential uh, applications and uh, applications for new developments or new homes take up a lot more time significantly for staff as well as professional staff uh, when they do the reviews, the filing and everything associated with it. Um, we also looked at conditional use applications. It's a similar process. Uh, but instead, as you're aware, uh, you know, the Board of Supervisors uh, conducts the hearing rather than the Zoning Hearing Board. Um, a number of other fees as well. Uh, I won't go through all of them unless if, uh, you, you want to. Um, but ultimately, when I looked at uh, the peer comparison, I took 34 townships in Montgomery County, uh, leaving out the boroughs because it's completely different dynamic for land development. Uh, and uh, currently, based off of uh, the analysis I did, our average residential subdivision land development application fee uh, ranks 15th highest amongst the 34 uh, townships that were uh, analyzed. Uh, what's proposed brings us to the or, or rather, that's the next one. Um, and also current non-residential average subdivision land development applications 
we are the 26th highest out of 34 townships. What the analysis shows and what's proposed uh, would bring uh, the residential subdivision and land development applications to the sixth highest out of the 34 municipalities uh, and the proposed non-residential average to the fourth highest. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the staff members that are doing the work. Uh, we have a limited staff and the township manager, the assistant manager, who have higher salaries than your standard zoning officer in neighboring townships or, or permit administrators or things of that nature. So that highly impacts uh, the actual costs um, for, for the, the fees, what, what is incurred. Uh, as a closing note, it is important to note that subdivision and land development fees are only permitted to recover costs. They cannot be based upon other municipalities' fees, and they cannot be used to deter a certain type of development. Um, obviously, I'm more than happy to answer any detailed questions you might have. So it's my understanding, and, and you said this, but I'm going to reiterate it again because I think it's an important point, is that when it comes to the fee structure, the fee structure is, is based entirely on the cost structure. In essence, it's just cost recovery. It's not, it's not a revenue source. It's not intended to be a revenue source. It's basically designed to just recover the cost that would be associated um, to the township for the activity, correct? Correct, absolutely. Does anybody have any questions in terms of, you know, typically every year um, in January at the reorganization meeting, we adopt a fee schedule, but obviously with the timing of um, staff transition, that wasn't, that type, this type of analysis hadn't been completed uh, ultimately. So we'd look to make that ultimately if we wanted to, this would then be something we would handle in the business meeting to adopt, correct? Is that, this is... Uh, correct. Uh, it is an item on the business meeting agenda for tonight, if the board wishes to act on it tonight. Right. Mr. Chairman, um, fees are like taxation and you know, to a resident, and they look at Worcester having money in the bank. Why do we need to raise the fees? But I think it comes down to the people actually using it. I, I guess the flip side of that story is, why should the other people in Worcester pay the expenses for someone putting a pool in, building a house, or doing it. So it's more of a user fee. If you're getting getting the item done, you got to pay, rather than taking the money out of the township budget or bank account to pay for the over cost or overcharge or undercharges that we're faced with each and every day. So I, I think. Kudos to you for doing the research and comparing our township to other townships and where the fees are. Um, every time we do this, every couple of years, we raise the fees. We get the complaints. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing it? Well, it's it's a business transaction. And in any business, you have to have, you know, fiscal accountability. And I think it's making the township accountable for the services and the cost of our services that our residents use. We just can't expect the township to cover these. So... I think it's a good idea and I think a job well done. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I, I think it's important to note that this batch, I, I do plan on uh, moving forward with actual permit, uh, zoning permit uh, analysis, but this is specifically for subdivision and land development applications, zoning hearing board applications, conditional uses. For the most part, this is impacting developers and people who are looking to build in the township. But this is definitely step one of the you know, multi-step process of looking at all the fees to make sure that the township is recovering uh, the cost for what is expended by uh, you know, projects that are done within the township. Lou, do you have any questions or any comments? No, it sounds like he's really efficient and he's uh, doing a homework. I guess we'll make a presentation with the fee schedule as far as uh, our adjustments. Or uh, so the, it is in the memo, and I can also bring back the slide, um, but uh, in the board packet, as well as the public packet, uh, there is a, a memo that has, this is the second page, uh, and then the fee schedule resolution that shows 
Uh, there's two versions, one with uh, the items that are being added or changed with red, and then uh, the second uh, is a clean version just so that you see what it looks like and if the board uh, decides to uh, take an action and improve uh, it as presented later this evening, uh, there's a clean version available for signature. Mr. Chairman, if I may. <clears throat> when I looked at what uh, the assistant manager was doing and uh, looking at his analysis, this uh, I've been in this business a long time and this is probably the most thorough analysis, uh, grinding out numbers, investigation of other municipalities. And I think the slide that was up just previous to this is that these type of fees are not a profit center. They're to uh, just cover the cost that the municipality incurs, as uh, Supervisor Steve said. And you want to, oh, okay. it's... <clears throat> It's the people who use the service that are responsible for paying for it, and uh, it's the appropriate way to uh, do this. Again, it's not to uh, produce a revenue stream that would go to the bottom line of the municipality. It's just to cover the cost of whether it be the inside uh, staff, professional staff, or the outside professional staff, which includes engineering, traffic, uh, solicitors, reviews. So. Uh, as I said in my initial comment, um, I've been in this a, a long time, and this is probably the most thorough analysis I have witnessed. Um, we'd be glad to share the Excel spreadsheets and uh, everything else with you, but uh, this, it's not been manipulated to make uh, an increase just to affect people, but to cover the cost that the municipality incurs. Fair enough. Uh, I think we're good. I think we'll take it up in the business meeting and we'll have a decision to adopt. So uh, the next item we had for the work session was the sort of the band shell location discussion. Um, just for the benefit of the members in the audience, you know, one of the items that we budgeted for in 2024 was um, a band shell for Hebner Park and um, there's some parts and pieces that uh, we need to discuss and consider and contemplate uh, as part of that process. And this is just sort of a discussion to talk uh, a little bit about the potential location and just any other items relative to that. Mr. Chairman, John, would you get a comment on exactly where it was uh, thought would be a appropriate location for the and shall and orient the board and the audience to that. Sure. Uh, I had a discussion with the, the prior uh, township manager, and we were looking at in the front field by eye. Um, one of the things you need to consider is that the availability of electricity. Um, so uh, it was near the parking lot, like between the letter I and then the, the round driveway in, but by baseball field A in that corner. Christian, move your little mouse to where he's talking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Yes. All right. Well, it's far enough away from the baseball field, it's not going to impact if there's a, you can't schedule a game in the band at the same time, but it, it's not going to impact anybody. It's near the parking lot, it's near the bathrooms. There's some, there's some uh, vegetation there that would shield the band shield from the township building. I mean, that's not a big deal. If it was a residence, you probably would want more vegetation. Um, there is some, <clears throat> depending on the time of the year and the time that the event is held, that there's a possibility of some uh, sunshine, you know, some direct sunlight onto the people on the band show. Um, but that, that was a brief discussion, and that, that's, really that, that's really the only place that we looked at um, the min minimal amount of time that we actually looked at it. So if you went there at 7 o'clock in an evening on a weekday, and that's usually when you would have an event. In the summertime? It, right. Yeah, for, for a little bit of time, it's probably. Coming out in January, so I'm just saying. Yeah. And the sun's not killing you? You never know. I mean, it yeah. might be coming out in January. Maybe we'll have like a uh, yeah. New Year's concert or something. 
Right. I mean, it, it depends what kind of shell of that's being proposed, right? I, yeah. I don't know if, 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 if the township ever decided on a, a vendor or any kind of size or, you know, layout of the shell itself. You know, there's a possibility that there's an overhang that could potentially shield right. some of that sunlight if it wasn't the late evening. Okay. So, the, the, I guess the question that I would ask in terms of, um, is there anywhere else it could go? I mean, I, it's fine to say that that looks like the logical place, but let's also say, is there another? Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to face it the other way, you could potentially put it on the other, by it past O, the show is past O, on the other side of the O. I mean, there's, there's, you put it anywhere, right? But you wanna have the availability for parking, people to get there. Um, right. So I, I think the closer to the parking area, the better it is. Um, the farther away, there's going to be more of a hassle to get to. Um, ADA concerns. Uh, the farther away you get as well. How about that lower lot that comes off of Abner Road, the, the lower section of the soccer field. There's a bigger parking area down there. Soccer field. Yes. Yeah. On the street. I mean, look, there's just more parking. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I'm just asking. I don't yeah, know if you're I haven't. That. I haven't. We didn't. We didn't walk there, but again, you. You could do that, and it's going to be the same thing. Right? You're going to have to orientate it a the same way, or you know, de depending on what you want there. It's it's really there's more parking there. There's no trails. Um, they're closer to residential houses. Yeah. Good point. If you move it down there, as uh, John said, you'd probably have a greater impact on residents. And when you get towards uh, the municipal building. Um, you don't want the traffic to drown it out, but the traffic will help buffer some of the noise. And you could always orient it that you go all the way to the down, put it down there and angle it so it faces the other way away from the road uh, where the mouse is right now. Um, it would just in, uh, do a little increase on electricity. I mean, the other services too, or the restrooms. Then you could use the back of it to, uh, if it's a closed in shell, right. you could put advertising or the welcome to the township sign on the back of it from a marketing standpoint. So then we'd have to look at the topography in that corner. Still have to write where the, where the little hand is right now is what you're saying? Yeah. It's not going to impact the soccer field at all. Well, you the same thing as the baseball field. Right? I know, but I'm talking about like as far as the field itself, it doesn't impact their lines and their where their nets would go. We'll have to no. look at that. But the only thing I would be concerned about is killing the grass. You know, you're going to start playing in mud. Yeah. Depending on how many events you have. Yeah. You know, if it's an every weekend thing, it's rainy out. You know, it's going to have a mud day. Usually, they're during the week. When you go to, I go to other townships and watch their bands play, it's usually in the middle of the week. The fire department usually assists in the traffic and the, you know, getting in and out of Valley Forge Road. So, <clears throat> what do you think, Steve? I think as John said, you only have so much space where you can put an item. So that's, we're dealing with something there. Like everything else, nobody wants anything in their backyard. And uh, I guess we try to put it in a place where it'll be less intrusive on the neighbors in the area. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, it's, you put it out in the corner of Hebner Road, you put it on the edge of Valley Forge Road. So I guess you try to bury it back in somewhere where uh, the noise won't project out onto the neighbors there. There's not many neighbors there, but Sure enough, if we do something there, the people will have concerns, much like the lights of the football field, you know, the same scenario. You know, we we have parkland, we try to use the, the best for the community groups to be able to use it. But uh, as I said, nobody wants anything in, in their backyard. It's not gonna be used in November, December, in January, February, March. It's gonna be used at night, on a nice night, the summer night, 
when, of course, everyone in the neighborhood's having a barbecue and uh, the high school graduation or wedding ceremony in their backyard. So I, I think that uh, that's important. And I think it comes down again to coordination, as I just mentioned, events that um, we put the event calendar, if we do something like that, we put an event calendar out, try to do it a year ahead of time, and it's sometimes not possible, but if someone's plan, plan, planning an outside wedding or some function like that where they don't want the noise, we try to work with the neighbors. So I think it, being a good neighbor helps sometimes to work things out, Lou. So I, I think the band shell's a great idea. I think it's something that we could use in a township. I think a bunch of community groups can use it um, rather than depending on neighboring townships for their facilities. It's something that I don't say long overdue, but it's something overdue as a township grows and having functions. So, yeah, and I, as far as location, again, I think you did a good job trying to be the most less impacted on the township residents, which is probably the most important thing. And once again, the people on Mars Road don't really care, the people maybe down in Berks Road don't care, it would be the people there to have the biggest concern. And we try to address their their questions and problems the best we could. So uh, I'm in favor of it. So thank you. To expand on your point, Steve, from my experience, the, the band shells are all, they're used during the day as well on the weekends. Like people will have music to do exercise classes in the morning. So um, it's not just a nighttime or an evening thing that interrupts. It's, you know, it could be from nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I didn't know that. The biggest concern would be the fee schedule. No. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I guess, so I guess the, the thought is if those are the, the potential locations, I guess we'd want to give a little bit of thought to, I would say, sound and sun, like in terms of, as Steve was saying, um, you know, angles and terms of that and, and, and then size obviously would have some impact as well, uh, ultimately. Okay. I'll work with John in the next week or so and get this solidified. Perfect. Okay. Now, Rick, we've only, I, I guess we've had some different pictures of band shells and things, correct? Um, metal, wood, and some of the different structures that we're looking at. So, Sean had started to pull some of that stuff together. There's, there's some question, and I know that Jay was sort of looking into it, and there's the question of sort of the bid process and how we how we need to go about um, this type of an acquisition, and certainly I think we'd want to consider there's some different materials to consider in in terms of um, we hadn't finalized that. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, we hadn't finalized that. It was more. Uh, Is there? I think we built the other buildings. Do we get through co-stars for that? Is there a bid process or? Well, there's some question. There's some question in terms of co-stars, in terms of if something, if certain items potentially exist on a on sort of a statewide contract, whether it has to bid or not. There was some question in terms of that, but it, certainly the idea would be to do it through co-stars. But whether or not we'd have to formalize a bid or leverage sort of a pre-existing contract that was statewide, and there was some just some question in terms of that. So, if you purchase on co-stars, you still may need to bid the work. Um, for installation, right. so. so you, uh, what was that again? We have to do what? So if, if you if if you purchase the product through CoStars, there may be a possibility that you have to bid the contractor. Um, okay. CoStars offers contractor services for certain things that it's like a package deal, um, but it's not always included. I know in the past some of the project we did back there, not that we went around the circumvent the the bidding process, but I don't remember we're not in the bid process. We just picked the contract where they had the price. We sort of went that way, but that was that's been a right a decade ago if not longer. Maybe things have changed. So okay. It's a bit of a rabbit hole, but I'll we'll leave that in the capable hands of the uh, township staff to sort of dot the I and cross the T to make sure. Ideally there'd be an existing contract that we can leverage, it makes it a little bit easier and then potentially have to deal with uh, installation and some of the components that go with that. I know prevailing wage is one of the items and some of the other things you have to contend with. 
Okay. Okay, perfect. So thank you, Jay. Thank you, Christian. We'll put those back to you. Um, and we'll look forward to additional updates on that. I just have one other thing, Mr. Sure. Chairman. In, in your packet, I just wanted to call to your attention the um, list of subdivision and land development projects and the general engineering activities. Uh, working with uh, John and CKS and Christian's suggestion, uh, we've redesigned it a little so it's easier both for the township staff to follow and, and the board as well, so you know where the current status of each one of these um, entities are, uh, the current security and the original security and stuff, stuff like that. So, Thank you, Jay. I did notice that in terms of that is certainly helpful in terms of certain items where they stand in, in terms of the projects and, and different things. They were saying that the report's a little bit more granular in terms of how we're getting that now, which is, is definitely helpful. Okay. So moving forward, does anybody have any other business to bring before the board relative to our work session? Nope. I do not. I do not. Seeing none, then does anybody have any additional public comment for the board relative to our work session? Yeah, you got. I'm afraid we got to get you on the uh, into the microphone and on the. Uh... Just an observation. I'll have to pretend to sign my name. <laughs> Deb Walker, we're sister. It's just too bad we couldn't put the band shell in one of the new properties. And I know it takes a long time to get all that infrastructure in, but wouldn't that be nice? Thank you. Yeah, that would be like the ideal thing. But anyway, that's just my opinion. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Fair enough. Thank you, Deb. We appreciate the comments. Bob? Bob Andor, Worcester. Um, specifically regarding the band shell. John, can you enlighten me as to like the rough size of the band shell, I realize it's not, but compared to the, the graphic that was up there, say the baseball diamond. So there's multiple sizes and there was no discussion with regard to size or cost. Um, so it's very preliminary at this point. There's looking for locations and then we were going to move from there um, once we had a location to see what would be best fit. And it's, it's Going to be roughly round or oval in shape. There's there's all sorts of all sorts of different sizes. Okay, so they're, they're you're not. So it's obviously preliminary. Yes. So my comment to the board would be: it's preliminary, and uh, until you have kind of a better grasp on the design, kind of trying to figure out where it can go. I mean, you certainly uh, look at multiple locations, but in similar contrast to what Deb has just said, you're trying to shoehorn something you haven't purchased or designed into a specific location, and there's a lot of other criteria that would be there. It also seems like you're, you're trying to put this in a place where there's nothing now. Certainly that would uh, mitigate some of the cost, but may not be necessarily the best location for that. So I haven't spent any time thinking about this, but um, my guess is that it's going to be, the sound would be directional and that would be the concept. So I don't know how much sound bleeds to the back or if you're trying to get it all to go out to the front, obviously to where the audience would be. But my quick look at that was on the upper field, you have two baseball diamonds, one of which is smaller than the other. Um, you're, you're putting a larger permanent structure in the front field as opposed to maybe moving the smaller of those two baseball fields closer to Valley Forge Road, hitting back towards the other field. And then maybe the band shell could go where that smaller field is. It's still meeting the criteria for where power is accessible, there's parking that's accessible. 
um, separating the two fields. I, I don't know. I'm not advocating anything, but mm -hmm. just don't short sell yourself in terms of saying, you know, we're just going to plop it in where there's nothing now because that's the easiest thing to do where that might not be the best thing long term for what what the township would want or uh, be able to have. If it's, say, between two ball fields, then you have more space in between those two fields. Obviously, you wouldn't be having three events at, at one time. But I, And also, <laughs> don't preclude yourselves from, from looking at an alternate site. It does make sense in a certain way of looking at it, being here at Hebner. Um, you just bought a field over here. Right. I'm, I'm not advocating that as a specific location, but looking at all of the locations for where it may or may not be able to go. Um, right. My two cents. Bob, just a point of clarification. Are you suggesting maybe we look at other parts in the township as well? rather than just putting it in the park system? Only in, only in properties that... Well, the town, just say we have the property right down here uh, on the Griffin Road. You know, once again, when you start thinking about this, I guess the band shell's used for the band shell purpose. Uh, are the people really there using the park amenities when they're going to the band shell? Are they there using a the playground? Or I, I guess we're looking to, as he said, pigeonhole into an area in the park or do we go somewhere else within the township such as the property here on Griffith Road that we just acquired you know the eight or ten acres you know put it there but there's no infrastructure within that or a lot of the properties the township owns to put the, a band shell somewhere I, I certainly wouldn't be advocating for you to purchase additional property specifically for the purpose of of utilizing the band shell but um one of my frustrations as a member of the Planning Commission is that you tasked us with something that we've done virtually nothing with over the last year in terms of understanding the usage of existing uh, township properties, what they're used for now, what they could be used for. Um, this wasn't even on any of the discussions as far as I'm concerned. And so it, it should be um, Certainly, Hebner Park is a central location within the township. Uh, makes sense for everybody. I'm not advocating north, south, east, or west versus the central, but I would say, you know, it's, it's going to be an amenity for the township, but just having it centralized, I don't know if that's beneficial or not beneficial. I mean, it just, what's it going to be used for? Maybe you come up with a bigger project for another property that's not only just the band shell, but becomes more of a playground and um, other services, um, you know, and maybe it's done in phases. You don't have to do it all at once. You put a band shell up and if you have a master plan and then part of that is another walking trail, depending on how big that property is and whether it's a dog park or a, a playground or some other functionality, but whether it, I mean, certainly having restrooms available um, would be a bigger uh, a bigger push than, say, uh, you know, getting power. I mean, power is just calling up Pico and saying, "Oh, I need service here." I mean, if it if it exists, you don't have to pay for it; or you pay less for it, as opposed to bringing a service in to that location. But trying to shoehorn something into a location just because those services are available. We have a lot of other opportunities in the township and there's many uh, of, of the facilities or site locations that we have that are, in my opinion, way underutilized or not utilized at all. Um, so it, again, having all gotcha. of those and, and then also, you know, just the concept of that smaller ball field where I had it, if you had it facing over towards the uh, township building, you know, the, the residents behind there are hearing less of that noise. And then that also addresses some of the uh, uh, sunlight issue. Right. It's a quick analysis. Fair enough. We'll speaking. take it. Thank you, Bob. I guess a question, a question to the staff. Bob brought up a question, which made me think about it. In your dealings in other townships, 
have they ever done an inventory of usage regarding uh, the basketball courts, the baseball fields? Uh, we did something a number of years ago. We had a park and rec person, Julie, that did a study on the park usage. Do other townships do that on a yearly basis, or how do how do they determine if the park's really being used? Just, I guess my question is: Do other the other townships you've worked in have they done a park analysis? Uh, so, uh, in my experience, they did a master plan for the park system. They did master plans for the trail systems, master plans for open space. Uh, so ultimately they took a look at everything, but they didn't do it like every couple of years. They did it like every 10 years. Um, so seeing whether or not it's being utilized to its fullest at that moment in time, uh, it's up to the board to decide whether they want to pursue that kind of exercise at that time. At least that's my experience. The young, uh, Supervisor Quigley, you're more on a from a usage standpoint that the baseball field day is being used five nights a week and tennis courts are being used X amount of time. You can do that based on the permits that are issued, but the thing you're gonna miss is the transient stuff that four or five people go and use play tennis, you know, uh, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So unless you have someone sitting there ticking off like you do a traffic count, that would be difficult, but from a from a permitting standpoint, that would be something we could take a look at and do. Um, you, know, you know, you could sit in the township building, you'll see the same four individuals playing pickleball on the tennis court at noon, religiously, at least three days a week that I know of. So, but okay. I can have uh, Dustin take a look at it from a usage standpoint too. Okay, thank you, Jay. Okay, fair enough. So motion to adjourn the work session. So moved. Coaches, give us a minute and we'll get started up with the business meeting. <laughs>